Jacob. I want to play a game. I would play some new rooftops in your age that will slowly burn through your system. The viewer is attached to our outside bin, but can only be unlocked by placing the rubbish bag from the kitchen inside. Can you take the trash out before it's too late? Or will you be only being taken out? Yeah. Wait, so you just want me to take out the trash? We are all members of society. Also, to get the end joke, you will need to bring a wet brush across the tile floor. Floor reflects society in which. Chores? You're just trying to get me to do chores? Maybe. So one of the main draws of the Saw franchise is and always has been the philosophy. I mean, look at that philosophy! It's the simple idea that to truly appreciate your life, you have to go through a true moment of torment or suffering. It's not so much the idea of the pain itself, but your human ability to survive past such an event. In overly simplistic terms, if you've ever done this, you probably appreciate this a whole lot more. Now with all these movies coming to a select streaming service, I thought now would be a fantastic and fun time to actually go through and analyze all the philosophy in this movie series. And did I say fun? What I actually meant was clinical torment. I do... I do enjoy these movies. It's just that I, uh... DON'T UNDERSTAND YOU! But hey, at least now I can say that I truly appreciate these movies. Let's start with Soul 1. Now the character of Jigsaw, the way he's presented in Soul 1, is actually the easiest to read compared to the rest of the series. He's a bit of old fuck. Seriously, as complex and complicated as this character will get for the rest of this series, right now, that's all he is. So a common moral repetition for this series is that Jigsaw doesn't kill people. I've never murdered anyone in my life. See, the metric of his philosophy is entirely dependent on your perspective of the value of human life. See, I'm a simple guy. It's my perspective that life is life, life is sacred, and that life is definitely worth protecting. I would argue that Jigsaw doesn't see life that way. Now, for this next bit, I'm going to be referring to the life of somebody who Jigsaw sees as unfit as life Y, or probably just Y when I inevitably get too lazy. And the life X as somebody who Jigsaw sees the value of life in. Not really going to be saying that a whole lot in this video. I would argue at this stage, life Y holds no value to Jigsaw at all, and a lot of people fall under this category. And I'm not even doing that overly sarcastic thing where I point out how impossible the tests are. I'm referring to this actual murder attempt right here. It's not really a test if it's just a drill against your head. Now as violent as this scene is, it actually gives us a lot of information. Sick of it. Jigsaw's worldview is a lot more bitter and cynical at this stage. As a result of these qualities, he's a lot more harsher towards people he categorizes as life Y, meaning that he is willing to sacrifice life Y if it means he can get absolutely anything of value out of it. So what you're telling me is that if I pull this lever, I'll get a Diet Coke, but a person will die? And if you don't pull the lever, nobody will die. I know it's the most difficult trolley problem, but what, what, what are you doing? <laughs> From how certain traps are designed to his just general attitude towards everybody else. I do not believe that this Jigsaw is trying to help anybody. But this begins to change in Soul 2. Starting off with the biggest difference, there was a path in this trap where everybody could have survived without going up against each other. Everybody could have survived. And even after that pathway got locked out, there were still different pathways where the majority of the group could have made it out. Everybody could have survived. He's also been a bit more obvious in his hints on how different people can survive in these scenarios. Essentially, I believe that he's starting to buy into his original mission state. That he's actually trying to help people opposed to just torment them. He's also grown a bit more arrogant in his nature. At this stage, he's kind of been doing this for a while, and he's overly confident in his interactions with the police. He believes he's already won, and to a sense, he was right. Soul 3 is the movie where the jigsaw we've all come to know and love starts to finally appear. There's still a few changes to the philosophy presented in this one too. We've already established that Jigsaw is willing to sacrifice life Y if it means there's something of value to gain. This becomes somewhat extremified in this chapter. But now, Life X is also allowed to be sacrificed in order to allow for the transition between Life Y and Life X. Essentially, this doesn't mean shit anymore. All the value Life X had has been removed and placed 
on the transitioning stage. This is thoroughly demonstrated through the shotgun collar. It's important to remember that no matter how you look at it, she has the value of life X. Either she was never really getting tested and this was all just an elaborate ruse for the sake of Amanda, or she was getting tested, passed, and then sacrificed to punish her husband. Either way, it drops the value of life X and places it on the transitional phase. Now, technically Saw 3 and 4 are all happening at the same time. However, Saw 4 adds a much deeper emphasis that people really have to help themselves. If you hold their hand, they're not likely to make this transition. And remember, at this stage, that's what Jigsaw is putting the value in. Going forward with the rest of the series, Jigsaw's philosophy stays somewhat the same and stagnant throughout. Which means, at this point, ironically the moment of his death, Jigsaw has finally figured out the ideals behind his philosophy. In summary, his entire system is based around the idea that people should put great value on their own lives and enjoy it while they can. As weird as it sounds, this eerily reminds me of Diogenes. 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 I can't say the word. Outside of the whole madman who makes his entire life his philosophy angle, a key element of Diogenes is the basic bare elements of needs. You don't need fame, riches, or even a wooden bowl to enjoy life. You just need life. But Jigsaw's philosophy follows a eerily similar idea. Characters who do actually enjoy their lives, but seek enjoyment through alternative means or outside means are punished for it. Which does somewhat suggest a further element of the philosophy. That life should be lived and enjoyed, but only enjoyed with that life. Ultimately, the idea of celebrating life through its own enjoyment is a nice one. It just falls short through its mega violence. I would be amiss if I didn't point out the vital failure in Jigsaw's philosophy. See, Jigsaw has an incredibly high failure rate, and even a lot of his successes turn out to be failures. Whilst the goal is to truly aspire towards living your life, Jigsaw should have turned around early on and realized the failure of his technique. It's just that he never really valued life, and that's where his philosophy failed. Anyway, that's my solo video. I've actually been working on this one for a little while now, it's just lots of things got in the way. So I was really excited and happy to film it, and I'm glad I did! It was so much fun! Thank you for watching! I hope you enjoyed it. Do you have any opinions about Jigsaw's philosophy? Write them in the comments below, talk to me about them, and we can talk back. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. The whole point is we discuss these things so that we can get a better understanding of different things. And as always, thank you for watching, it means the actual world to me.